Hello everybody, we are back here on Call of the Wild the Angler with episode 4 of the new account beginners playthrough. Let's go ahead and do Taylor's Tackle Expert Class. This is going to be the final class for Taylor's Tackle Academy. And this is where we will end up getting the bulk of the rewards for doing these uh, Taylor's Tackle missions. And believe me, it's worth it. I did this on my main account when the update first dropped. And now we're going to be doing it here for this series. Let's see... How long this takes us to complete. I remember that this is going to be the toughest one, but I think we should be able to do it still. Uh, let's go ahead and read it. Welcome to the final class of Taylor's Tackle Academy. The class dives deeper into spin fishing, explains day versus night fishing, and covers how to use the handbook to find and catch fish. In addition, the class will talk about trophy tokens, reputation, and the souvenir shop. For this mission, we will be catching a sauger, a nocturnal fish. This means that the Sauger is primarily active during the night and will be near impossible to catch during the day. Golden Ridge counts five nocturnal species, Burbot, Catfish, Sauger, Sturgeon, and Walleye. Go to the marked location to unlock the fast travel point and then return at nightfall. So this is one of the missions I've seen a lot of people have trouble with and most of them are just not understanding that you have to go there at night. You have to fish at night, you have to be using the lure that it tells you to use and catch a gold ring Sauger. So, it's actually not too difficult. You just got to pay attention to what they're telling you to do. Because uh, if you do it even a little bit different, it's not going to complete it. So like right here, we need the jerk bait. We need uh, the current setup we got going. And in fact, to be honest, I don't think there's a specific rod and reel that we need. So we might take a look at the shop and see if we can buy some better gear. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have available to us. So unfortunately, we can't get a better rod and reel yet. And uh, it's not worth getting a better line yet because our rod cannot take a better line. But it is nice to see that we got a decent bit of new stuff unlocked. In fact, I need to buy some of these other hooks. It's good to have at least one of every single hook size when you can get it. Well, we've got a very long journey ahead of us. We're going to head over to this location and then we will be able to uh, fish there once it becomes night. Let's go ahead and jump in our vehicle and then we're going to follow the road over to that fast travel point that we need to make it to for this mission. Uh, we're going to try and follow the orange road. So just kind of go through here, go all the way over here and around through this area. As always, when you're driving along any of the roads, keep a lookout for stuff like this. Keep, a, keep an ear out for the sound that it makes and then report them whenever you can so you can get that XP. Again, I also recommend trying to drive by any potential fast travel locations as you're heading to your waypoint, like this one right here. So anytime you get near a fast travel point, try to unlock it as you go. That way you can revisit it later if you want to fish in that area. Also, uh, as I've said in previous episodes, you got to be on the lookout for all the lookout towers. And uh, as you drive by them, be sure to stop there and uh, click survey. That way you can get some new points of interest added to your map that you can visit later and unlock. This is another one of the warden favors you need to be looking out for. I know I didn't show this one in previous episodes, so we'll show it now. This is the infested trees. And that particular one is right here next to this lake. And there we go. Level 8. We just unlocked some new gear as well as getting uh, some free bait. Leeches, dough ball, liver. Man. They give you so many different baits as you level up now. I remember when this game first came out and I had to level up the first time around. You didn't get anything for free. You got your money from getting a level up and then you were able to buy some uh, gear and you didn't really get any free baits or anything like that. It's so nice to see they've been doing some major positive changes to this game, especially for the early game because it just didn't have much of a progression on initial release one year ago on PC, but now it's honestly pretty impressive how much they've changed the early game. And there we go. We completed the Oxide Daisy uh, invasive plant mission. That's actually kind of crazy that I've already completed that. It, it seems like all of them are along the main roads, so as long as you're following the main roads to do the Taylor's Tackle Academy missions, you will literally complete the, the Oxide Daisy Warden Favor mission. That's nice. That's a little extra thing you can do along the way. All right, let's go ahead and walk on the dock to the waypoint. Return during the night. So we got to go to this location between 19 and 6 because that is the nighttime in this game. 
Any time that isn't uh, within that range is going to be considered daytime when the daytime fish will be biting. So we got to come back between 19 and 6 in order to get those nighttime fish like the sauger. And you know what's a phenomenal thing to do during the time that you're waiting? Going over to one of the uh, perch and sunfish hotspots. This area right here is known for people pulling out tons of diamond yellow perch as well as diamond bluegill and green sunfish. They're a little bit more rare than the perch, but this is a great area to go fish for some panfish while you're waiting for this mission to uh, be completable. And if you guys want to know where all of the known diamond locations are for different fish, be sure to join the official angler discord. The link to that is in the description of this video and go to the resource hub channel. When you go there, you'll find a crap load of information on the game that will help you out with pretty much anything you could ever want to know, including the areas that seem to give more diamonds than others. Now you can still catch diamond and goldfish anywhere on the map. It's just there's some locations that seem to give them more often and uh, those locations are shown off in that uh, resource hub in the Troll Sporet and the Golden Ridge Reserve. Um, I believe it's like help sheets or resource guides or spreadsheets or something. It, it, it'll explain it in there. So as we wait for it to become night, I'm just going to catch some of these uh, pan fish as well as perch and stuff like that. And if we get anything notable like a gold or a diamond, you guys will end up seeing that as well. I'm currently using the size 10 hook as well as the bloodworm because I want to catch as many fish here as I can to get money and XP since we are a lower level. However, if you want to target just the gold and diamonds for the bluegill, green sunfish, and yellow perch, use the bloodworm with a size 7 hook and then only golds or diamonds will be big enough to bite it. You're going to catch a lot less fish, but they're going to be higher quality, so if you just want those, that's what you got to do. That's actually looking like a solid fish. I, I think we might have our first decent sized fish from this location as we're waiting for uh, night time to come. Let's see. What do we got here? Yes, that's a gold green sunfish. That is our very first gold of the playthrough. Let's go. That is amazing. We got our first trophy fish, a gold green sunfish off the size 10 hook and the bloodworms. That is incredible. That is such an awesome thing to see. And there we go. There is our very first gold token. You will need a lot of these if you want to get the best gear in the game and the tackle box upgrades and stuff like that, which once we get to that point, we'll kind of go over those. But right now we can't really afford to get any of them. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we may have made a mistake. I think we just hooked into a catfish. Oh, no. I think we hooked into a catfish. This. Oh, this is not going to end well at all. This is not going to end well. Yep, yep, uh, <laughs> this is not, a uh, not what we needed to have happen. Yep, it's at the end of the spool. Well, that was unfortunate. And this is why, uh, when you're low level, I recommend the bloodworms over the minnows, because stuff like the catfish will bite the minnows. Oh, oh gosh, no, no, not again, not again. <laughs> Okay, I, I guess it's catfish time. It's 17, so I guess the catfish have started biting. Uh, we may have to move locations. Or I suppose the uh, smarter decision would be to go back and buy some more bloodworms and also equip a couple of the hooks that I wanted. Uh, let's get rid of that for now, and then let's get rid of the extra size 10 hook and instead grab our size 8 hook, as well as uh, going into the shop and purchasing more bait. Let's go for some more blood worms. Let's get about, uh, let's just max out. Let's get 99 of them. We're going to go through them like crazy anyway, so we might as well. Now that we're level eight, we do have the option to buy a bait casting setup. So let's see how much this is going to cost. This is about 400. Um, the reel is going to cost about 500. So that's 900 in total. And then uh, we can get six pound line with it, which is going to be like 200. We can afford it, I think. Question is, do we want to? Because I'm pretty sure we get a fishing rod from completing the Taylor's Tackle Academy, though I could be wrong on that. You know, I think we will. I think we're going to go ahead and buy it because this is something that we can use for at least like the next five to six levels. And I feel like that is going to make it worth it. Uh, let's see. Do we want to go with the fluoro or do we want to go with the mono? Probably the mono. It's a little bit cheaper. And right now, I value the price tag a little bit more than uh, the visibility. 
We're also going to buy the popper real quick because that is a lure that a lot of the bass really love and we'll probably end up going for bass at some point. It is now past 19, so let's head over to the dock and try to catch our gold sauger to complete this uh, Taylor Tackle Academy Expert class objective. And I believe after this, there will only be one more thing that we have to do. Jerk baits are most effective using the stop and go technique. Occasionally pause while retrieving to perform this technique. The bottom right of the screen displays the currently active technique. So it wants us to do the stop and go. Though I think we can probably... We can probably do something else. No, actually we do have to use top... We have to, we have to use the stop and go. Okay. Well, that's a little unfortunate they forced us to do stop and go. But it is what it is. We'll just do it. Let's go ahead and cast out and we will uh, go to a one reel speed. Be honest, I think we may actually be able to just do twitching now because it said cast and retrieve using the stop and go technique. It didn't say we had to hook the fish while we were doing that technique. So I think you can just do it for a little bit and then switch back over to twitching. We will see though. In fact, now that I think of it, can you even do the twitching technique with a jerk bait? I think you can. I suppose we'll find out soon. Well, there's a fish going for it. There we go. We got a fish on. I don't think this is going to be a gold, but... Ah, it might be. There we go. Gold rank Sauger. So some people do like to farm this little mission for extra gold tokens. I personally am not going to do that just because I don't feel like it's necessarily like the best way to play the game. I like to play it somewhat the way that it was intended to be played. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna cheese this little quest right here, but if you really want to, you can cast out other lures, catch a few gold sauger and get those uh, gold tokens. But personally, I'm not gonna do that. So let's just move on with the mission. In the handbook, you can select any fish and press tab. This will show you additional information about the species, such as compatible habitats and preferred baits and lures. The habitat information is not exhaustive, nor do you need to find a place that matches every condition. However, you're more likely to find the species in that place that matches the conditions here. Try to catch a northern pike with the information available in the handbook. You can't, If you can't find one, try changing your bait slash lure and location regularly. There are four different spin fishing techniques available, each affecting the effectiveness of the lure. Constant retrieve the lure at a constant pace. Stop and go retrieve the lure in a real stop, real stop pattern. Twitching, move the rod tip sporadically to give the lure a momentary burst of speed. Jigging, continuously move the rod tip up and down. That kind of explains all the different techniques. Now we got to go ahead and find ourselves a northern pike. In fact, I may have just seen one jump right here. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the size 7 spinner and see if we can hook into him. There is a northern pike right there. Let's see if we can just uh, do a quick little twitching method and uh, reel this guy in. Because these pike are typically pretty aggressive. I don't think we'll have to spend too much time fishing around here until it'll bite. In fact, there we go. And that is... that might be a muskie. Uh, I think it's a pike though. Either way, we are in for a really, really tough fight. I think that might be a muskie, though. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's a pike. Come on. Oh, we almost got it. I think... I think it might be a pike. I think the muskie has a little bit different coloration. Oh, actually, no, no, no. That's a muskie. That's definitely a muskie after we got a closer look at it. And we got it in. That's a muskie, indeed. But it's our biggest fish to date at 9.43 pounds. That's a whole lot more credits and XP than what we've been getting up until now. And that also ended up leveling us up to level 9, so getting some levels in the process. That is either a pike or a muskie. It's kind of looking like a pike. We can, we can hope at least. We can hope it's a pike. Whatever it is, we're getting it in a little bit faster than the last one. There we go. And that's our pike. That is the pike that we needed. 143 XP as well as 53 credits. Love to see it. And now we've got to go enter the souvenir shop. So let's head over to the souvenir shop. Uh, the spot we got that pike is right here, by the way. And uh, yeah, let's continue on with the missions. Let's check out the souvenir shop. The local souvenirs is here at the bottom. There we go. I think that's all we got to do. Beautiful. 
getting the level up as well. One final challenge in Taylor's Tackle Academy. A graduation gift is waiting upon completion. So that means the next episode is going to be the final challenge in the Taylor's Tackle Academy. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little uh, playthrough series so far. We're already to level 10 after four episodes. Hopefully in episode five, we can complete this challenge as well as uh, hopefully moving on to actually fishing for some other stuff. I just figured I should mention this before I do end this video. This challenge is still part of the expert challenge, like catching a goldfish of any rank is still part of that expert challenge. However, because of the fact that this video has already gone on for way longer than I wanted it to, we are going to do this as a, a, a two part series. So stay tuned for either later today or tomorrow to get the other part of this challenge right here where we will complete it by catching a goldfish of any rank. But thank you all so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing as well as uh, leaving a like and comment down below, letting me know that you enjoyed the video and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.